um, it's very much the Open Wallet Foundation is very much, you know, just in the very beginning. Uh, Tracy is here. Um, she's our uh, 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 tax um, uh, chair and uh, really been instrumental in getting the project to where we are. But our, you know, discussion started probably last summer. And in the, uh, the OSS EU in, in Dublin last year, September, uh, we made a you know, bold announcement and uh, the person behind it, uh, Daniel, unfortunately, uh, he couldn't be here. He's in a parallel meeting uh, in European Identity uh, Conference in, in Berlin the same week. Um, and so he and many of the people really from quite diverse uh, different backgrounds and communities realized this concept of uh, open source project for a wallet. And, uh, uh, you know, I will touch a little bit about where this diverse background or diverse people somehow all merge together. And we finally had an official launch in February this year. And so we are kind of a, almost a three months old. Um, and I think, uh, 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 Tracy, we had uh, the two code contributions started uh, two days, three days ago. <laughs> Uh, it's for SDJWT, uh, that's for uh, Selective Disclosure, JSON Web Token. So for people who understand Web Token, this is, uh, you know, this uh, little um, digital uh, object that we can um, send each other through web and uh, uh, give people a way to use that as a, as a means to build uh, trust um, protocols. Okay, so um, it, you might have heard, not in this keynote, but probably tomorrow, a digital trust initiative by Linux Foundation. So the Open Wallet is also part of that. And I'll leave some information on how the, uh, the, uh, the, the, you know, the, the rest of the foundation as well. Um, very simply, we look at a wallet today and the very, you know, these are what I call general, general purpose wallets. So both, you know, Apple and Android platforms offer some kind of build, so-called building wallet. It's very general purpose in the sense that you can have many things in it, many kind of things, you know, whether it's cash, credit card, and stuff. Uh, we also have a lot of a specialized wallet. I didn't show up here. The specialized wallet will be like a crypto wallet or a bank, specific bank's application. Because you will be dealing with only things owned by that particular um, application or use case, right? So those who are more specialized. And we're thinking about as an open source project is, A, we, you know, we want to have allow a, a common uh, good quality code, so allow a lot of these kind of application can be relatively easily developed with good um, uh, privacy and, and uh, 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 security features. And also we would like to these to be general purpose so they can be used in any scenarios, not just for a bank, but you know, in, in this session, how about metaverse, right? So, uh, so that's the goal. And here are the, some of the examples. Um, so you can imagine in the middle, is all these cards you can pull out of your wallet. You know, basically each one you can think of as a, a representation of uh, data we found very valuable. So anything like really we care about, we want to control over, um, I think can be represented in some kind of a digital objects. And these are, you know, I've shown quite a, some examples that can be carried with your wallet. Um, and the wallet doesn't necessarily have to be in your mobile phone, but it can be, you know, virtualized in the web, cloud, uh, into a metaverse headset, and uh, different hardware. So the, the Google people just hand us one token uh, this morning, so that can be, uh, so that can be uh, the, the, your, your, your notion of the wallet as well. So it's all different purposes. Um, we use an analogy to try to explain what the project is trying to do, and the analogy is a, a web engine. Uh, so Blink is a web engine, and the Blink today probably covers, uh, I don't know, maybe 80% of the browser market. So the browsers are commercially developed software product, but the engine beneath it is, is a blink, right? And, and, and V8, uh, which is in the JavaScript side. So those, you know, 
or eventually implement a uh, whole um, category of standards um, um, for, for, uh, for browser that will be you know, HTTP, CSS, and, and JavaScript. Um, so if we take the similar kind of the like a reasoning why we need this, uh, so Open Wallet will be you know basically building these uh, open source uh, software components. That's going to be very critical to to build proper wallet or wallet like applications, and there are many many of them. And it's really, I think I want to think about a wallet like application is any application that we feel. Um, there are data and things we really feel very valuable to us. We want to have control over, and that can mean almost everything. I think, like we, if we care about our privacy and ownership and have basic agency in the digital um, economy or digital, um, you know, uh, networked um, uh, ecosystem, uh, it is important for us to carry something that we have control over. Um, and so there's a whole set of protocols related to that as well. Uh, in addition to these, like, uh, how we think of technical protocols, there are also a lot of uh, regulatory rules. Um, and the, the, in European Union, they call toolbox. You know, they, this, these rules would also dictate how uh, these, uh, these assets can be managed. Anyway, so I, I hopefully already you know, explained the, uh, the, the mission statement. So essentially, that's what we want to do. We're not building wallet ourselves. We're not, uh, of course, um, sort of deciding any you know, commercial uh, 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 rules and, and uh, the, the, the protocols for standards, et cetera, will be coming from the traditional um, uh, standard bodies as well as some new ones that I think we will develop over, you know, for example, in the metaverse, I'm sure the metaverse um, um, ecosystem would probably come up with a lot of rules as well. So those are basically um, we would like to integrate into the open source project itself. Anyway, the, the, uh, the, the very quickly, the, uh, the structure look very similar to, if you're familiar with the Linux Foundation's structure, so this is a typical one. And the only thing I want to uh, point out to today is that we create uh, or trying to create one uh, government advisory council. So we have a, a governing board I'm, I'm a, a, a member of, a technical advisory council where you know, Tracy is our chair. And uh, uh, we also trying to start a advisory council for governments and government you know, organizations and representatives that can help us sort of um, uh, advises on uh, regulations as well as you know, a lot of the rules uh, depend on the type of uh, things we keep in the wallet, right? So um, money-like things of co often comes with a very strong um, regulation and et cetera. So those will be uh, the, the uh, I think our ingredient, we was trying to see this foundation to succeed. Um, I'll talk about a little bit of the role of wallet. So this will be the end of my introduction piece. Um, so the role of wallet, I think of it as a, uh, a very key component in the overall trust framework. Uh, we talk up quite a bit about, in the keynotes, right, a lot about security. But there's something that we haven't quite mentioned, which is like the basic orientation of what security means. Uh, Typically, we, we, when we talk about security, we talk about protecting a infrastructure. We talk about protecting servers, protecting platforms, etc. And uh, um, it is often, um, uh, you know, uh, like I think, been uh, not recognized widely enough that we also need to think about each of us as a infrastructure. Uh, so we need to have a way to protect our own information. That can be your privacy, data, and whatever you own in the, uh, in the internet. And so, um, so I want to basically highlight two things. One is to hold things. So you have you know, these digital objects you can keep. And two is use those things to exercise control, to give users some way of control. And this is quite important. I think it's a, the wallet is also the most direct personal interface. Um, all the you know, protocols and algorithms you talk about, um, the end user will not directly feel it. But the wallet, they will. They will be you know, touching it, using it, and you know, interact with it every day. 
Um, so, um, so it is very important that we do it well with, uh, to, yeah, with a goal to enable user agency and then to you know, remove the burden of choice and complexity. So we need to make that very convenient, intuitive for the user. Um, and that's the, uh, I hope that will highlight, I think, my, in my view, what the role of wallet should be. Um, uh, I won't spend much time other than to point out that so this is a European Union digital identity, EUDI's um, architecture diagram. And uh, in this big uh, complicated diagram, the, the pink ones are regulators, the yellow cards are players or <laughs> uh, parties. And what is that single purple thing? That's the wallet. And so we just want to see if you look at the wallet, it's really in the center of a lot of things. Um, so now I'm gonna shift to, um, in the remaining time, I want to shift to um, Metaverse. And uh, uh, so uh, I, um, when we were um, talking about uh, the, you know, starting a Open Wallet Foundation in Dublin, I also met Roy and, and others, Royal and others who, um, who was trying to start Open Metaverse. <laughs> and uh, so uh, I got uh, involved into some of the understanding of what Metaverse need to be. And, uh, you know, as learning some of these so, you know, like very challenges for metaverse, I just want to say that it doesn't exist yet. So we're talking about future challenges. I think it's very interesting because if you look, look at the, these top seven lists, this one's from a company called Lucid Reality Labs. Um, uh, it's about reputation, identity, data and security, currency payment, law jurisdiction, ownership property, community network, time and space. So maybe I can link time and space, but almost everything is related to, I think, the concept of wallet identity and you know, privacy. And those are the really in people's mind when they think about a metaverse. The second one, this um, is a research um, effort right now in mostly in UC Berkeley. And so we had an opportunity to talk to Vivek Nair, who's the lead um, uh, you know, researcher there about metaverse and privacy. Um, and so uh, in, this is their second paper coming out of that effort, uh, which basically used a relatively rudimentary and simple learning algorithm to identify, uniquely identify um, 50,000 individuals. So it's very large enough that you can generalize, say basically anybody can be very uniquely identified by the motion alone. So the, one, the way you, you know, you, whether you are in the metaverse play a game is where they started. Uh, the way you play the game, how you move your arms around, all of that, uh, by basic information of collecting that within the gameplay's context. So you can say, okay, in this, is, in this particular scene, people are playing, you know, you know slashing this box uh, in certain way, right? And with about a few hundred uh, vectors or parameters, uh, which is relatively small, if you remember, in like a chat GPT, it's you know, 80,000, 100,000 degrees of uh, uh, dimensions there. But this is a few hundred of them would uh, un very uniquely identify each individual more than 90, 95% of time. Uh, so uh, the, the, the clear, uh, there's clear implication that metaverse has huge privacy problem. And uh, to, you know, how do we solve that problem? We don't have answer yet. So the next few slides, what I would like to do is basically look at like why open wallet or you know wallet kind of thing in general is critical to the metaverse. And so I will start with identity and and, and avatar. Um, and so in in the in the case of an avatar, right, it's a digital object, 3D object, let's say, that I have some control over, but not 100 percent because some of the avatar has to be automated. And it's going to show quite a lot of things. It's a huge surface um, or attack vector, you can think of it, that's going to show a lot of things. Uh, we really don't know how to deal with that kind of thing today. Uh, we, we don't have a way to really um, 
to build something that representing our identity, not purely as a like a um, uh, you know a key or um, a randomized string or something like that, but really has a very complex object, has a lot of uh, display, and it's meant to be public. Right? That's what identity is for. Why you need identity? Because you want that identity to mean something, and therefore it must be public in some way. And so between, you know, control both of them and you have full control of that is critically important. So I would say to build identity and avatar, you need the baseline uh, core capabilities, which I think will show up in the wallet. So that control you have is the, way, the, the basis that you can build an identity and avatar for Metaverse. The second uh, in, in that space is authentic content. Um, uh, authentic goes both ways. One is it's not fake, right? So where it's from. So provenance and authenticity um, is extremely important. And these objects can be also very valuable. They're expensive to build. So you may want to make sure that you know, you know, it, it, it cannot be easily cloned, etc. So all of that require authenticity as well as provenance. And how do you keep the authenticity and provenance along the entire um, uh, metaverse or um, you know, digital object development cycle, right? So we were talking about um, supply chain for software code. And this is exactly the same problem, except as I think it's much more complicated because now you have all these 3D objects need to all work together. Um, and so this is a, a, another area that uh, a, um, a complicated developer-focused process is not going to work. We need a way that enable all human and creative you know, developers, et cetera, to be able to conveniently use that day to day in your life. That's the kind of a scale we need to have. And I think that will also somehow start from the wallet. Um, we talk about digital assets, so a lot of people think like a metaverse requires some kind of monetization, or you can think of another business model, you know, a model that is not ad, it's not purely subscription, I guess, something new it hasn't happened yet. And I think to enable that kind of business model, we'll need a wallet. Um, transactions, I'll probably skip this one, it's very clear. Um, if um, you know, today we do e-commerce, but e-commerce is still quite complicated. It's based on a long chain of events um, that uh, the, its, its security and privacy are very um, fragile, at least, I would say, right? So how do we make those things much more mature and intuitive and easy to use so that uh, we don't constantly fear there's a fraud, there is a hack going on, uh, I think that is critical. And as if we step further into the metaverse, you're even more exposed. Um, I think we, we need something like a wallet. <clears throat> um, privacy, I think this one probably will be the key. This is maybe the like, general problem, you know, representing all of the above, essentially. It's, you know, what is the privacy? And at the end of the day, it's your control of your own life. Um, uh, and that's, you know, being essentially in the digital world, this becomes um, uh, enlarged. It becomes a very, uh, I think it becomes very uh, uh, accentuated into one or few spots, which is, I think, dangerous. So we need a way to, so that to spread, you know, the, um, the, the systems out and have our own control over it rather than rely on uh, one single solution alone, right? I think it needs both ways, uh, but um, uh, it's a key that we hold some part that we have a say whether we, we, we can have a unilaterally make a decision about privacy. And finally, um, I want to mention the, the world of uh, AI and all the agents. So the, in the complicated system in, in the metaverse, um, I don't believe we can have men or women and, and you know, humans fully uh, in control of how the system works. A lot of things will have to be automated. 
uh, including our own avatar. Um, the, the, the avatar you, you know, purely manipulate by your own hand and play is one thing, but as a representation or a identity piece, it will need to be somehow automated so that it can, for example, act on your behalf in some limited fashion. And that is very critical. And it's also bringing the uh, immense um, challenge, I think, in sort of authenticity. In this world, you know, we know it's all made up world, but which one are genuinely true, which are not, uh, what context we are walking into, you know, what kind of room it is. Uh, all of that require uh, all of us have a, uh, a way to speak. We need uh, agency in that world. And how do you get that agency? You need to, uh, if you remember uh, <laughs> Corey's speech this morning, you need to control a piece of computing resource. It has to be yours. Uh, so I, I hope I uh, can convince you that is uh, also, I think, is starting with something, the concept of a wallet. Okay, so um, I will just leave this uh, quickly on the board. Um, uh, the new opportunities from consumer side, from creator side, developers, businesses, where um, uh, you know, these things work. And uh, um, you know, the way I would like to convince uh, uh, everyone is that there's a very critical piece of uh, software we need to do well, um, as well as have some ownership or have some say how it is developed. And uh, I hope I can convince you that it's an open wallet foundation. Uh, so my purpose will be break, you know, make this a bridge to uh, the metaverse community, and hopefully you can uh, join us. Uh, to make this uh, uh, a reality and, and possible. It's a very uh, young and new project, a very exciting time. Um, so uh, everybody is welcome. Um, and uh, um, the, uh, the, I think this piece is very important. We cannot rely on any single uh, uh, company, uh, any single organization. Uh, we do want to see this develop in the open. So we know what's in there, how it works, um, and uh, we, you know, I was chatting with uh, John earlier, right before this session, that I think the key thing is that uh, we need to focus more and more on uh, the individual, the consumer, the person who really uh, uh, um, not only using the wallet, but uh, you know, it is designed for them. Uh, I think that's very critical. So we welcome all the participation in the Open Wallet Foundation. Um, I will leave a few links and how to be, uh, get involved. Um, there is a very good um, report. Um, it, it was produced at the same time uh, in February, why the world needs an, uh, an open source wallet right now. And also there's a Discord channel and the GitHub um, for, uh, for getting involved. Uh, our GitHub is, uh, all Discord are all very new, so that GitHub is just showing up with uh, two project um, proposals right now. Both are focused on uh, selective disclosure, uh, JWT. And uh, the, the idea of selective disclosure, I just want to use that as an example, as a very uh, critical. It means that um, when we are issued or when we have a piece of uh, information like a driver license, uh, we, when we use that particular uh, object, right, we want to control what is disclosed to a particular party. Uh, so if I go to a bar and they want to check my, or used to check my age, um, I want to be able to give them only that piece of information, not anything more. And that's a very general uh, capability because uh, basically any kind of a, uh, a wallet, uh, sorry, a web token, uh, once it's based on this, you will have that capability. So that you can apply that to every type of uh, user we, we, we have. And that's you know, just one quick example of why uh, these issues and, and uh, you know, this, the software that make it possible is very important. So that will be the end of my talk and I hope I have a little bit of time. <laughs> yeah, so thank you. So we have at least uh, 10 minutes, if I correct. Yeah. Any questions, any comments? Uh, 
Yeah. Um, I should have put a, uh, this one here. I don't know, Trace, do you remember, like, total will be probably close to 50, I would say, members? Right, right, right. Yeah, so the, the general category of members, so we, we basically uh, ask you know, the larger organization to, to donate some fund to run the, uh, uh, but otherwise it's wide open, anybody can participate. Um, the, uh, all the software open source, um, and uh, uh, we have a lot of uh, organizations involved. Uh, some of them are, uh, they've been, you know, uh, driving the Europeans' digital identity initiative. So that's a large group of them. Uh, for for people who may not be quite familiar, uh, the EU Commission ha uh, driving through registration and other means driving a EU-wide digital ID. The sort of like all the countries in the EU can issue the ID. The ID would be recognized uh, European-wide anywhere. Uh, so that's a big initiative. A lot of people who have been writing open source code already, we hope to attract them as a, you know, they, uh, the Open Wallet Foundation will become home kind of way for those projects. Uh, there's uh, also many uh, group of uh, um, uh, uh, organizations and, and uh, open source projects who in the last at least 10, maybe even longer, have been working on these issues for a long, long time. And so uh, I, I will remember at least, you know, trucks of IP, I've been very actively involved. Digital uh, Decentralized Identity Foundation, uh, OpenID, uh, OIX in UK, um, uh, ID2020, for example, and there are numerous ones, and many of them are actually here, so um, in, in the audience as well. Uh, I wouldn't remember all of them, but uh, there are a lot of the, these organizations who have come from different backgrounds. Some uh, sort of from blockchain side, some from decentralization, Web3, uh, some from payment, and want to see you know, the payment uh, ecosystem more open. Um, some from uh, uh, European Union, like from government driving uh, initiatives. I know uh, John is really instrumental in British Columbia driving uh, the digital ID uh, by the BC Gov, for example. Um, and there are many of them. There's also environmental um, uh, effort trying to uh, uh, use you know, this to control uh, or manage the supply chain for green initiatives, for, for instance. And uh, John talked a lot about a, a BC Gov mining um, initiative program. We've, we've seen a lot of demos uh, using very similar kind of a technology. Um, so we are building on top of that foundation, and what we are doing is trying to put all those together in the home, in the neutral home, that we could make them, you know, the software be interoperable in some way, general purpose, and scale up potentially, right? So those will be the, I think, uh, the, the mission or the challenges we want to face. Any other questions, Metaverse? <laughs> yeah, um, the, I went to a uh, Royal uh, organized a workshop um, a few months ago in, in Austin, and we went there, it's really in the Metaverse workshop, there are essentially two tracks, and one big track is on identity, privacy, um, and so I, I hope you know, this, we, we're thinking up uh, why these are very important. Um, there are actually a lot of open source and open source wallets even uh, out today. So if you go search open source wallet, a lot of will come up. Most of them, I would assume, are blockchain based. So basically, they are building a wallet for a particular type of you know, coin or blockchain they're building, right? Um, what I think is uh, missing is uh, how do we build a wallet that's, like we are saying, general purpose, um, and that is really targeting any individual consumer, and it's for 
any purposes, not just a particular uh, coin. So general purpose, open source, and, and you know, uh, good quality for that. Um, so that is an unsolved problem. Uh, so today, I don't think there is this kind of wallet that you will allow you to do all, all those types. Uh, so there's a lot of, uh, for technical uh, oriented uh, talents, I think there's a lot of unsolved challenge. This is, again, I come back to the, um, the browser and uh, web engine uh, analogy. Uh, this is an unsolved problem because the web browser today, the security framework there is that the browser is a little attachment. So to empower the browser or the endpoint is a hugely interesting technical challenge. So I think I think, you know, to me, that, is, that shows the power of uh, these wallet and shows how uh, a completely new type of applications and new potentially type of business models can be developed with this change. So um, I think it's a very interesting and exciting time. Yes. Right. Um, value alignment, like I you know, didn't have a lot of time to dive into, but value alignment is a critical um, piece, right? Uh, how do we realign the uh, overall orientation of these uh, ecosystems? So uh, the, the, you know, the, the user uh, have more say in that while still uh, not sacrificing scalability and also the, the, the business model that it enables. So uh, I think that, that that is the critical, uh, hardest challenge. So we, um, uh, we are in the very beginning. So there's no like ready solution quite yet. There's nothing even to download today. <laughs> but we hope to uh, solve that soon. Uh, there's a lot of uh, quite, um, you know, we, don't, we didn't start from scratch, you put it that way, right? So there's a lot of uh, existing software um, uh, already developed in different contexts. And uh, we're just in the beginning of the process of attracting those projects, moving to Open Wallet Foundation, and then integrate them, and potentially uh, creating a new type of infrastructure. So we are thinking about, for instance, the, you know, how um, web and uh, native based application developer today is a, you know, it's, it's complicated uh, space there. Um, so this could potentially provide a opportunity for us to really think uh, how that software framework would look like. Um, so that's another, I think, very interesting development. It will be uh, a echo of a lot of people promoting Web3. Um, and uh, uh, so we, we, I imagine that uh, in the future, there will be a lot of applications they wouldn't call it open wallet applications, but they will have a wallet embedded in there somewhere. And that could be the you know, crucial thing uh, for that application. Exactly, and, and agency is not something I think we can simply say, oh, I give you a choice. Well, a lot of a choice, like I was trying to like, remember when I first landed here in, in, <laughs> in the drugstore uh, as, a, as a graduate student who didn't know much English, I would say <laughs> I thought I knew, but I didn't. When I walk into drugstore, I had my brain just go, ah, oh, because I just look at every word and these Drug names are just incredibly hard for me. <laughs> and I couldn't do anything. I don't have agency. I have a lot of choices. 
but I can't. And that's a hard problem to solve. And if we can solve that, I think it will make a, you know, a, a lot of the issues that we're talking about uh, hopefully better.